My name is Tasso Comanescu, and welcome to EliteGuitarist.com. Today I'll be going over Domenico Scarlatti's Sonata, arranged in the key of E minor by Andres Segovia. Special thanks to our good friends over at Guitar Salon International for lending us this brand new 2019 Masaki Sakurai guitar. The traditional catalog number for this Scarlatti Sonata is L352, but you also see it sometimes listed as K11. And the original key for this keyboard sonata is C minor. Now Segovia here has transcribed it and arranged it uh, for the guitar, like I had mentioned earlier, in the key of E minor. And there are obvious advantages to the transcription being in this key of E minor because it allows the usage of all the open strings in the bass, which are a part of the key, E, A, and D. And the piece now has a two octave range that you can fully exploit, E, E, E. And that's going to be as high as we go in the piece. And that would be a lot harder if we kept it in the original key of C minor. So for those of you that are into transcribing and arranging, I recommend E, A, and D. Pick one of those keys and use the open strings. It's really good. Uh, just like Segovia here. So this two-part sonata is an example of Scarlatti's early work, and it's dark and reflective. Domenico Scarlatti was a Baroque Italian composer who wrote primarily for the keyboard, and his life roughly mirrors the same era as Johann Sebastian Bach, as they were born in the same year of 1685, although Scarlatti ended up outliving Bach by seven years until 1757. When I first decided to learn this piece, I, of course, dug up recordings and famous performances, and the two that really stood out to me, obviously, were Segovia's original recording and that of Julian Bream in his legendary 1960 rendition, which is really a virtuosic masterpiece. I will share some of my technical and phrasing ideas that I've developed with these two reference recordings in mind. The marking, tempo-wise, is Allegretto, which gives you some leeway in terms of how fast you like to play it. Uh, for performance, I typically shoot for about quarter note equals 90 on the metronome. So here we go. Part A is bars 1 through 14, and I've broken it up into five manageable sections for you to learn with additional small phrasing ideas within those sections that you can use for technical practice. OK, so now in bar 1 on beat 1, we have an E minor triad. And this involves your second finger of your left hand on the second fret of the D string. And you're going to play that with your thumb on your right hand, P. And then I am playing the open G and the open B with your middle finger. So that's the first chord, E minor, right there. And then on B2, we're going to slide our second finger over to the F sharp here at the fourth fret of the D string. And we're going to throw down a full bar. Okay, So you see how it says C2, that means seia there. Um, you could do a two-thirds bar, but trust me, when you try to execute the ornament here halfway through B2, you're going to want to have the full bar. Um, and so we have an F sharp, an A, which is a part of the bar, and then a D sharp. This is a B7 chord in first inversion. Uh, and the D sharps with your third finger at the fourth fret of the B string. You leave these down. And then, here's the trick, you want to leave your A finger on your right hand on the first string to mute it when you execute this ornament. It also prepares you for the open string E minor triad afterwards. So this is how you execute the first two beats of bar one. And then we have these descending thirds here, F sharp with your fourth finger, and A with your second finger, that's the fourth fret and the second fret. And then your first finger plays an E with an open G, on the same string, so second fret and open. And that's the first mini phrase. And I strongly recommend you technically practice this because it's how you start the piece and it can be very tricky. And you don't want your whole rendition or performance to be beholden to this first part if you can't execute it properly. So here we go slowly. And because there's tension on the five chord in classical music before you resolve to the one, you might want to roll the second chord there. So straight, roll. Be careful not to play it 
too fast. And now we're on to the second part of this first section, bars one through four. Okay, and the pickup is on the end of four and beat two. We have a third or a tenth, you could say here, D sharp and F sharp. So this is the D sharp at the first fret of the D string and an F sharp at the second fret of the high E string. Leave that down, go into B2, shift it up one fret, and then add the open B. Now shift these two fingers up two frets to the F sharp and the A, and then on B2, an open G with a B at the seventh fret with your fourth finger on the high E string, and then back down to the second position, A with your first finger on the second fret, and then an open E. And then on beat three, we have a B chord here. B, B, D sharp. So B with your first finger on the second fret of the A string. B with your third finger on the fourth fret of the G string. And D sharp with your fourth finger on the fourth fret of the B string. And now leave your first finger down in that five, six bar position. Collapse the bar and now stick your third finger up on the fourth fret of the A string, which is a C sharp, two octaves. Your C sharp is a part of the bar. Slide your third finger up, two frets now on beat four, play a D sharp with an open B, and now slide your third finger all the way down to the second fret of the same A string to play the B with your A now being played on the second fret of the G string with your fourth finger. Okay, so the pickup of bar one going into bar two slowly. That's what's so great about this part of the piece is you get to slide your first and second finger up that first string there and the fourth string, guide fingers. And I like to keep it consistently thumb and middle, P and M on the way up. And same thing here on the way down, except at the very end, P and I. So it's up to you what fingerings with the right hand you wanna use. We'll talk about some more specific fingerings as we get further along in part A. So now going into the third bar here, of the first phrase. We have open E and then an octave away E with an open G. This is low E with your thumb, index finger plays the second fret of the D string with your second finger, which is an E, an open G, then a full bar on the second fret. Grab the F sharp and the A on the low E and G string. Leave that down and then play a low G and a B, okay? The G is with your second finger on the third fret of the low E string, and the B is with your fourth finger on the fourth fret of the G string. So, B1, B2, and now you have your first finger going down, so fifth here, open A and an E on the second fret of the D string. Slide that down one fret, play the B and the D sharp here, second fret of the A string, first fret of the D string, and you're gonna leave that first finger down until the end of four. So rather than let, letting it go like this, you wanna leave it down so that you can go off to the races again. And this is considering Bream's super fast tempo. So when I was learning this piece, I wanted to play it smoothly and with the nuanced musicianship that you find in Segovia's recording, but I couldn't ignore the fact about how impressive Bream's interpretation was in terms of its technical dazzling speed. So this is one of those areas where you can save a little bit of movement in the left hand if you want to play faster. So you leave that first finger down, play the descending bass line, C sharp with your fourth finger, B with your second finger, and then back to the same phrase we just played on the and of four in bar three, and you can move Ponticello here, which I like to do. So just relax your wrist, straighten your nails out, play closer to the bridge. So that's all the same stuff right there. And then on beat three, you have the two Bs here and the D sharp, which we've played before. And we're gonna do a pull off with your fourth finger to the C sharp, which is a part of the bar, which is on beat four, uh, which is actually, and you're gonna do a pull off from the D sharp to the C sharp, which is on the end of beat three. And then on beat four, you have an open B. And that takes us through section one, which is the first four bars of the piece. So once you go Ponticello, the end of bar three,
play the open B to bring your hand back over the sound hole, and then we come to this beautiful descending thirds part in section two. So, in this first section that we've just gone over, I'll play through it slowly, and I like to use what's called linear phrasing. Basically, you have tension here, and then you resolve down and grow as you get higher, and then come down, and then grow, and then come down, and then grow. Change the color there. You can really get, really explore the colors of the guitar there if you like. So those are some phrasing ideas in section one. Let's move on now to bar five, which is the start of section two. And this is gonna take you all the way through bar eight, okay? And we have this beautiful descending thirds uh, motif on the top two strings. Uh, and I like to use my first finger as a guide the whole time, okay? And I'll give you some other tips as well during that. So on the end of four, in beat four, we have the D sharp and the F, which is kind of like the B chord here, setting up the E minor. This is the seventh fret and the eighth fret of the B string and the G string. And I play it a little detached here and land on beat one of bar five, which is a third. You have your B at the seventh fret and your G at the eighth fret. Throw in some beautiful little slice action there, if you're into that, and then some vibrato. Pick up downbeat. Notice how I immediately throw my thumb down, planting on the third string in preparation. Right there, at the end of bar five. Okay, so now going through bar five, on the end of the first two beats, we have this open B, and be careful not to pop that out. So I use M and A and then I here. Shift down, first and fourth finger, A and F sharp, then open B, and now first and fourth finger on the G and E, third fret, fifth fret. One and two and three. And you want to accent the downbeats. Don't accent the open B, because it sounds kind of ridiculous in my opinion. It's not how you want to do it. Much more beautiful in this case. And then on beat three, you land there, and now you're gonna shift your hands over. Beat three, you land there, and now you're gonna shift your fingers over one fret, but you're gonna let go very lightly on the strings so you don't get the slide. Notice I just moved it over there, and I'm gonna execute a pull off with my fourth to my second finger between the D sharp and the C sharp, right here. And now we have an F sharp, D sharp, third here, second fret, fourth fret, with our first and fourth finger. And you're gonna pull off to the open B with your pinky. And then go up to a D sharp and an F sharp again here. Notice how I take my first finger and I never let go of the first string. So I let go of the string slightly, but it's still touching. That's a trick when you want to play faster. So that first finger looks like this. This is just guiding you through bar five. And bar six is the exact same thing, but more intense. Okay, so bar five, pick up it from measure four. That ascending triad, you're using PI here, and then planting the thumb again. So bar five, six. And then we ascend now at the start of bar seven with a C and an A third. This is the C at the eighth fret of the high E string and the A at the 10th fret of the B string. Again with one and four, going back down to that original triad. Now you have B and G and then A and F sharp. Leave those fingers down and do the four to two pull off now between E and D sharp on the end of three. And then on beat four here of bar seven, your first finger plays the G and your fourth finger plays the E at the fifth fret. And you gotta pull off to that open B. So I highly recommend just practicing that, light with the right hand, quick with the left hand. And then you repeat the same idea of moving up with your first finger as a guide. Notice how my first finger doesn't leave the guitar. Bar eight, but now it changes here. Okay, so this triad 
on beat three is now on the second string in the third string. This is an A and F sharp. And I still use my M and A finger here. And this sets us up to the most tech, you could say, our most technical measure so far, measure nine, okay? So beat three of measure eight. You're gonna now pull off with your thumb the E to the D sharp with your third and first finger. Notice I use both fingers as a guide here because you're, you're essentially ornamenting this descending third. Okay, so M and A together, then thumb pull off three to one. Okay, slowly. P and I pulling off again. Open E with your A finger, and then index finger plays the F sharp with your third finger at the 11th fret of the G string. So you want to isolate this bar eight because it's a pivotal transition. So this is section two. We're going to go slowly from the end of bar four, the beat four, the end of beat four and bar four through bar eight. You can do the same thing with the linear phrasing. Start strong, come down, and crescendo on the arpeggios. And we're off to the races here. So that's section two.